Green Room. Now, the thing with this film is that they didn't give me too many materials for this. Just got a trailer and a clip. Okay. And that's all I need right here. Now, this deals with a band on the road about to end a horrible gig, a horrible tour, and one last stop. One, they just about getting ready to go home, and one last they stop. They probably quit being a and, band. And probably, yeah, gonna be <laughs> shit's not going well at all. They're going to be responsible adults. <laughs> you know, they learn something. They got that shit out their system. They're about to grow up. And then they're about to get into the, the van, out. They have to step into the green room and be witness to a horrible crime that now puts them in the middle of danger. And the worst part about it, they in Nazi country. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. And it's one thing to be cornered, pursued, trapped, and wanting to be killed by a bunch of rednecks, but when you get redneck Nazis, that's just downright horrifying and almost hopeless. Let's go ahead and take a look at this trailer, and we'll come back with a little bit more in our review. All right, I can get you guys a solid gig. Matinee tomorrow, doors at one, you guys are on a three. Gentlemen, you're trapped. Things have gone south. It won't end well. You can't keep us here, man. You gotta let us go. We're not keeping you. You're just staying. Shoot who is left. Let him bleed. Get ready to run. Here we go. Careful now. You know, as I said, the biggest tension in the movie for me is uh, just feeling for these people out of just basic human sympathy. Sure. Because uh, I really don't feel for them as characters as much. That's one of the problems for, with the movie for me. Now, when, it's just what I said. You know, really... They were about to go home. This was the last thing that they needed right like here. Everything on this tour has gone poorly. It's clear that having a career in punk rock is just not a thing. <laughs> it's not. Anymore it's these not. Days. That's what's punk about. It. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're broke. <laughs> you know, you're a shitty person. And these people, I mean, they're, they're not bad people, but this, the tour has been miserable. They're playing diners <laughs> in the yeah. middle of the day. Yeah, driving across the country, siphoning gas from other cars just to make it, only get there and find out, like, yeah, the gig got canceled. And, um, uh, I can only pay y'all six dollars. Yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> I mean, you really want these people just to have a break. You really want them to make it home. When you see that they just got themselves into bigger trouble when they were about to just be released, it's like, man, y'all really didn't need this. You know, no, no matter how bad a band y'all were, <laughs> and y'all were pretty shit. <laughs> you yeah. know, I wanted to kill them myself in the beginning, but I was like, yeah, y'all don't even deserve this. Well, now under the the heading of only white people, uh, anybody else who's told like I got a gig for you, but it's playing. At a at a uh, a Nazi clan uh, compound, <laughs> would say, "I ain't taking it." <laughs> yeah, because only white people could get in the damn door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we wouldn't take it. But you know, they're like, "Hey, man, they were desperate." You know, they're yeah. like, "Hey, we're desperate. We're white. We'll take it, man." Like, how <laughs> you know? much? Six hundred and fifty bucks. We'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So you know, I uh, I can understand why they do this, but uh, the problem with me only feeling for them in the most basic way is that this is a last stand movie. An under yeah. siege mm -hmm. film. Uh, this is in the tradition of Rio Bravo. Uh, what's the John Carpenter movie? Uh, uh, Assault, Assault on Precinct 13, 13. You know, which is basically Rio Bravo. You know, uh, this it's uh, and the thing that makes those movies work is that there's a camaraderie in these people being trapped in this one place, and they can only get by by working together. Mm -hmm. And these people don't really work together. It's not because they're bad people. It's just that they don't have time. Yeah, once they, the shit kicks in, you know they they're trapped and they got to figure out how to get out of it. Well, they they don't have time. They're in a completely unfamiliar environment. They mm -hmm. know there's a huge threat, but they don't know exactly what it is and where it's going to come from. 
And yeah, and they don't have a lot of time. And they're trapped in a room with strangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, with somebody in there who maybe they can trust and maybe they can't. Yeah, that, I mean, don't get me wrong. I like character driven movies. It's just not a lot here because uh, the movie, when it kicks in, it kicks in. And that's not a bad thing because when it kicks in and the villains that you have, it's, uh, like I said, it's a bunch of neo Nazis. In fact, neo Nazis, go see this movie. Don't watch it to the end. Just watch it for about an hour and. 20 minutes, hour and 30 minutes, because it makes y'all look like badass. <laughs> it, it's something frightening about being trapped in there with skinheads. It's like, uh, because the skinheads in this movie, the neo-Nazis in this film, if you get caught by them, it ends for you horribly. They don't, they don't shoot you, you know, they don't choke you out or anything. They, it's like being surrounded by a bunch of racist Jason Voorhees. And they, because they got, they they're, got. They're a bit sadistic. They, they're very sadistic. They have dogs. They have machetes. They have. A uh, uh, window lining that they stab you with, you know. It's like yeah. it's like they pick up. They're very basic, and that adds to the tension of it, knowing how these people will murder you. And the other thing is, the the action kicks in so quick, you don't know, you don't know who's gonna die. Because when you die, it's not, you don't get like a one of those nice deaths where you like avenge me. You know, you like mother. Oh, yeah, your death is. Ah! You know, and that's it. Yeah, you getting your throat ripped out or something crazy. Else yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's bad. I would only say that the whole thing you don't know who's going to die. Uh, the poster's a bit spoilery. What's that? Oh, the po the poster. Well, I see, that was the one great thing about this. I went into this movie not seeing the trailer, not seeing the poster. I went in completely blind. So like when the stuff started popping off, I was like, oh, it's this kind of movie. All right, I'm I'm in for it. Let's see what happens. Oh, I okay. I saw the poster, so that gave me some clue. Okay. But outside of that, I saw at the draft house and the guy who like set the movie up. They did a long big setup, but they were trying to do some kind of simultaneous thing with a Q and A mm -hmm. for later. Mm -hmm. But he was like, "Man, y'all gonna love this. It's 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 uh it's punks." Versus Nazis. Who couldn't love something like that? He made it sound like it was going to be something fun. And Martin's like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> but, he, but I was like, okay, it's going to be one of these crazy movies where everybody's laughing through it. And, uh, yeah, it starts out, it's just so miserable. And you don't get to know or even like these people except for identifying the crisis they're in because it turns on a dime. And, yeah, I was like you. And I was like, oh, this is one of these. And I just yeah. felt like, like, I felt like I was there. I'm like, I ain't in this band. I ain't got nothing to do with this. Y'all need to let me go. <laughs> I don't know them, man. And Especially they, uh, what you were bringing up, saying that they were uh, really sadistic. The other thing is they're really smart. Like, these aren't just, like, the stupid, like, a KKK or neo-Nazi group that goes out and just kills you, and then we'll figure it out later. Like, no, we, we, we're going to take our time and figure this situation out. It's like if Steve Jobs was a Nazi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the Patrick Stewart role. Yeah. yeah because, <laughs> because he's running things here. And, you know, you got, you got a guy like him who's like, yeah, they might have been all like, let's just do it now. He's like, no, no. We're going we're gonna to do this right and make sure it's not going to come back on us. And he's trying to sweet talk them the whole time. Oh, yeah. The whole time he's behind, yeah, he's behind that door. He's like, yeah, you know, it'll be all right. We don't want to hurt nobody. I mean, it works so well that you – I mean, it, 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 to have a villain in a movie where they are so charismatic – and he's charismatic behind a door. Yeah. And he's like, we just, look, we don't want no trouble. We just want you guys to come out and end this safely. And he's convincing them. I, let me tell you something. I'd be dead. Because <laughs> we don't want any trouble. Just come on up. Okay. <laughs> you know? he, said, he said, don't let us go. Yeah. Corey, I swear to God, we open yeah. that door. <laughs> no, he's a nice guy. We're going to push you out. <laughs> like, oh, you're so cool. Yeah, yeah you go talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, I, I, uh, I don't. I don't find him scary like the like the the the, the reviews and the in the trailers trying to tell you and a lot of people promoting the film. Oh, he's frightening. He ain't the one with a machete. He ain't the one with a gun. He's just calling the shots. I find him more cunning and a little bit, a little bit creepy. But I don't mm -hmm. find him terrifying. It's those other people that I find terrifying. He's, he's President Snow, he's, basically. He's, yeah, he's scary in comparison to every time you've seen him before this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that, and that's the big deal. This is different. Yeah, he's it's Patrick Stewart, that Patrick Stewart, you know, the thespian playing an old redneck, you yeah. know. No, that's the funny thing. I'm watching, I'm like, I'm seeing Jean Luc Picard and Professor X, like these people, like, we all need to come together and unify, yeah, yeah. be happy people. Them saying some shit, nigger dope in here. I was like, why? I know. It was <laughs> almost like feel? Captain Picard, like, saying, you know what, fuck it, the Enterprise ain't paying enough. I'm going to grow some meth, you know. I'm going to join these Nazis, you know. Uh, and and the, I got to give it to the. Uh, to the director here. The director, his name, let me see what his name is. I have it written down right here. He did a, a movie that was called uh, called Blue Ruin. And the this the uh, the movie Blue Ruin, it's a it's a good movie. You can find this on Netflix. Jeremy Stalliner is his name. And the thing that worked for Blue Ruin is that he's able 
to make a lot of these people scarier than your average villain or killer in another film because they all seem like real people at first. Yeah, they're not flamboyant. No, no. Uh, when the crew, like in this scene here, uh, when you see the band who's led by Anton Yelkin, mm. who's who's the girl in the band? Imogene Poo. Oh, oh, no, no uh, Aaliyah Shawkat. Yeah. Aaliyah, yeah, Aaliyah Shawkat. You know, it has leave it up to a girl to get her phone someplace. No, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> God damn. I'm thinking like, man, girls on these phones. Jesus. Fuck. I mean, you're always on your phone, and the one time you forget it, you forget it in a den of Nazis. You know, <laughs> killer Nazis. But she, she, uh, she forgets her phone in this room, and the whole time that they're getting ready to leave, these people seem like <laughs> like the average people. Even for Nazis, they're like, hey, you know, that's kind of cool for being Nazis until you find some shit they don't want you to see. Not that. I'm really careful. I understand. Yeah, my phone. What? My phone. Uh, I'll catch you. I got you. Thanks. Sorry, Tyler. <laughs> Excuse me, all. Oh, right there. Holy shit. You call the cops? Fuck that. Hey, stop! What the fuck? <laughs> I told you to follow. <laughs> Think you gonna make it? Yeah. <laughs> Big old dude blocking the door. Hey, he almost got his shitty jacket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. wearing that shitty blue jean jacket. Uh, no, man. If I would have walked in that room, he'd be like, "Thank y'all." Uh, I know. <laughs> I saw. Yeah, I, 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 yes, I am. I don't know if this man has been stabbing. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, damn it! You didn't lock the door. You didn't lock the door. No, don't talk and don't touch them. Stay put. It's fine. Just give me a minute. Something terrible. Even when, even like that Nazi right there, mm-hmm. even he's kind of cool at first. Like he really don't want to kill them, right? But you know, it's he he does what he has to do because he's trying to earn his shoelaces. Which well, yeah, is, it felt like like he's in the group because he wants to belong to something. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. He doesn't have the killer instinct. He's like he's a tragic he, villain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Damn, he looked like a pug puppy. He <laughs> does. does. He looked like the whole movie. Please, y'all, just stop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Lord, please. You know, white power, please. <laughs> uh, uh, that I forgot that lead character's name, but he's the lead in uh, or that that actor's name, but he's the lead in Blue Ruin again. You should you should watch that movie. Uh, another thing about Blue Ruin that you see in this movie is that he's able to make it, these people look like real people up to a certain point. They start going crazy, but he does make make these people seem believable, even when he's real stylish. This looks like a David Fincher film. You know, it's got like a lot of green tint to it and everything. Mm-hmm, yeah. It's a very stylish film, and it's stylish all the way from the cinematography. To the action that you have here, the, the colors that I use here add a claustrophobia to this movie. The lighting, right? You know, all these dark patches that they had to go through to try to find out to escape. Uh, just the way they film these hallways, I mean, it works on your claustrophobia hard. And I, uh, you know, I I, 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 I admire the movie for maybe not the development with the characters, but for the craftsmanship that is put into the action and the death in this movie. As I said, oh. this is this this film goes to. Uh, to horror movie levels of violence that they have here. So if that's your thing, I mean, like Martin said, you know, here's the thing, Martin, you walked in not knowing what this was. How, how was it for you to see how it just got as gory as it was? It was rough, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but the, the, the roughest thing was the tension. That, the, the tension was more for me than the actual gore. I mean, well, there's a maiming in this that was pretty horrific. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because that, that was just one of those, like, holy fuck, man. That, uh... You know, you could just see that happening. The, the the depth's a little over the top, some of them, but it didn't bother me so much because I was like, "All right, this is this is what it's been leading to, and that's fine." It, I really, there's only one thing I had a problem with in this movie. Oh, what's that? The ending. Oh, hmm. I, well, you know, we can't. Of course, I know, say of course what, we can't. Did you have a problem with the ending? Because I really didn't. I didn't mind it. I mean, it. I, yeah, we can't really say anything about it, but it, there was one unbelievable thing about, I thought about it. But maybe if somebody was in that mindset, I could see them doing uh, that. It, it wasn't. It wasn't me like going like, "Oh, that's impossible. That couldn't happen." Mm. It was that <clears throat> it ended in in a way that was just kind of a a typical way. I, like a lot of these movies, like so much of it felt fresh to me, and I was really into it. And then at the end, it just did like what so many of them do. And and like <laughs> last year, um, I, when we were. Uh, watching films that we were going to vote on for the Austin F- Film Critics Society. Mm-hmm. I was one of the volunteers who watched a lot of the Austin-made films. And, oh, okay. and a lot of the ones that were crime-based had that same kind of feel of just kind of like, well, okay, it just kind of peters out right See, here. See, that, that's my criticism. The violence is so quick in this, 
And that is what the director, who obviously that's his priority in the movie, the suspense and the violence. Yeah. But without concentrating on these characters, it's not that I don't mind them getting to the, to the, to the meat of what this guy wants to do, no pun intended, that what he wants to do uh, immediately. But it's just that without having the characters there, it becomes way predictable. You know, that's the thing about these, yeah. these, uh, these Last Stand movies. We know it's going to happen. That's why we enjoy the characters so much. Right. Being that when, when we don't have that, that, those characters to root for as strong, then we're just waiting for the inevitable, you know, uh, which here is worth the wait, but still no big surprises here. Well, well you know, uh, we got two different problems with the movie, but I still think it's a decent film. What do you think? Oh, I, I still what, like it a what's lot. What's your rating? Oh, um, rating? Oh, you can lead up to it, whatever. What, you know, oh, well, like, like, like hey, look, uh, I, I, <clears throat> you know what? It is a movie that's where it started out. I wasn't digging it so much. So I give it great points for pulling me in. And it totally had me pulled in and on the edge of my seat and just nervous, almost tapping my foot the whole time. Just yeah. like, man, yeah. I want to get out of here. But this is, this is really well done. Um, but, and I was just disappointed that it couldn't finish stronger. Mm -hmm. it, like it, it couldn't keep that up and, and give me the ending that, yeah, I didn't see coming or just went like, well, golly, it felt like it was all for naught by the end. But I still, I still have a lot of praise for it. Um, I don't know. It's 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 really one of those high matinee, low full price movies mm -hmm. for me. Which we'll pick one. All right, I'll pick one. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm gonna do, man. I know what you're gonna. You do. ain't getting out this room alive. I, I, I'll, I'll 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 give it a high matinee. Okay, Mr. Corey. Goodwin. That's fair. Um, I loved everything about this movie, man. Outside of a, a, a small nitpicky things here, or there, the, the violence in this made me cringe, and that's something I haven't done in a movie in a long sure. time. Like this, I like what the director did, where he wasn't pulling away when somebody is getting cut or mauled or shot. So uh, that's something I really enjoyed with this, and I think that they did enough development with the characters for you to, to, to you know, kind of. You know, see what their their motivation is and why they want to get out. But they also did enough to pull back to where you could implant yourself onto them. So you'd be like, all right, I'm I'm rolling with Anton Yelkin, or somebody else could say a female in the in the in the theater could be like, oh yeah, I'm with Emma Jean Poots, I'm with this person. So I feel like they did that for people to just mm -hmm. kind of imprint themselves and put themselves in that situation. And I think if a director is able to do that, I think he did his job. And I was able to put myself in these the roles of these people. And with that, uh, I'll give this rating a full price. Oh, okay. I'm you know what? I'm almost right there. With with you i'm almost wanting to give this a full price but you already heard my criticisms of, of, of the film and uh, you know i'm a character guy you've heard me say that uh, under certain unless there's like some big exception here which was not here but I, I still i still know what this movie is for man and this movie is for all you people who go to these crazy ass alamo movies out there <laughs> <laughs> you know the alamo draft the alamo draft house is promoting this hard and i don't blame it's a damn good film but they're promoting this hard because those alamo fans y'all are some bloodthirsty motherfuckers right? man <laughs> y'all are some sadistic like really cruel bloodthirsty just fucks man you know this that's why i was just like the whole time watching i was like why does this dude make it sound like this movie's gonna be fun to watch no it was not fun <laughs> about this shit this shit was horrible i never felt lower about mankind than i ever right, did watching I this shit <laughs> yeah you're fucked up <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm the target audience yeah, for this movie i'm not saying it's bad but i'm, I'm giving this a very very high matinee it's a it's a, it's a well-made film it's so in in really it's uh the suspense in here is 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 uh this guy directed this like a professional man i mean this is amazing right here this is uh but i just want those characters in there but for you alamo people hey y'all gonna like it y'all like seeing people get burned and killed and mauled all right well you have fun you know this is this is like your disney film that would make that the alamo the place where i would not want to watch this movie oh you know what my biggest fear is doing something fucked up at the Alamo and getting trapped in there and having a bunch of Alamo fans trying to like pull me out. <laughs> I'd rather get trapped by Nazis and skinheads any day over Alamo people. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know. I mean, y'all cool, but fuck that. <laughs> Can you see you and me trapped at the Alamo draft house? <laughs> I'm leading it. Get him! Yeah, of course. Get them! Get, get those motherfuckers! <laughs> Hand me that knife. <laughs> He'd be the one to come in and be like, hey, y'all let me in. I got you. Hey, it's just Corey. Let him in. Thanks, man. Hey, yeah! <laughs> oh man yeah it's a, it's a good movie though man isn't it funny though we're done with the review i'm just thinking right here i'm looking at this scene right here that's sometimes when it, you know i'm enjoying a movie but but there's sometimes like i wish the movie had ended early just because these people have it so bad at this i know right <laughs> like, like right here excuse me all 
If he had just done this and just walked right out, thank yeah, you. He would have yeah. been yeah. fine. <laughs> like when you walk into a room and you're not supposed to be in there, you don't look up. You keep yeah, going down keep, and leave. But, but, but like that's not even like a thing you're not supposed to be in. Like you would, they were just in that room. They were just in there. It's the green room right before you go on. They're going to the van. You think of nothing about that. I was like, yeah, we left the phone. We're just gonna grab this, get out of here. Be be polite. That's, yeah, that's the moment right there where you go like, I'm gonna be polite and say goodbye. Oh, oh shit, yeah. Nah, shit. fuck that. Hey, I'll see y'all. <laughs> yeah, I'll see y'all later. Bye. I saw nothing. I like, saw nothing. Like at right all. here. Oh, you think they would have let you just walk? Bye. <laughs> well, first of all, I'm not gonna be in that, in that bar. <laughs> just, just seconds right here. Just seconds right here. The credits could have rolled from right there, you know. <laughs> Man, Control Z, yeah. Control Z, let's just undo coming in here. I would have walked. Oh, out. I left my phone. Let's just. I'll get you another one. <laughs> I know. Would have walked out that room, even singing. I didn't see shit. <laughs> Don't give a fuck. <laughs> oh, all right, all right, all right. Or <laughs> well, maybe you could have gone over and like, yeah, let me give her one. Too. Yeah, I didn't like this bitch anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 We die. How long can we wait? I'm sure that is. Is that a pep talk? Just stab some shit. Get ready to run. Here we go. I see the man.